Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another video. Today I'm joined by John and Liam as we talk about Kieran McKenna. This is his official first day as town manager. I'm going to get John and Liam's first impressions on Kieran and also get their takeaways from his press conference, his interviews he's done so far. I'm sure we'll get to know the man more in depth in the future on the touchline and throughout the weeks in his first few games. Um, of course, he's a very different character, John, to Paul Cook. Uh, no voice changes, but he has got a very soft Northern Irish accent. Not as deep as Jim Gilton's Northern Irish accent. But um, your first impressions on Kieran McKenna? Well, um, thanks for having me on firstly, Ross. Um, good to see you and good to speak about yet another change, I suppose. I'm not sure it's good, but it's, it's, it's the re reality of where we are. Um, I, I make no... Um, kind of uh, apology for saying I didn't know much about um, Kevin McKenna until um, this time last week when his name started getting mentioned. So like a lot of us, I've watched his interviews. I've watched, you know, some of the, the, the things that are out there on um, YouTube and that kind of thing and found out a little bit about him, read some stuff, some positives, um, a couple of negatives, mainly from bitter Man United fans who I can take or leave anyway. Um, but today was a real interesting thing for, um, for me because I read um, the transcript on the EADT as it was coming through from Andy and Stu. And then I've listened to the club um, interview with him. And when I, I've got two different kind of first impressions. The first impression on paper was very much, he said everything that you would expect a manager to say, but I didn't really get a feel for him because I just don't know the guy. When Cook was appointed or even Lambert was appointed, I knew them. So I already could imagine them saying it and that little bit more of their personality came through because I already had that impression in my head but when I just watched the um the video that the club had put out um I can see why some people might say he's um I would say dry and others may say boring but he's very dry isn't he he's he's not a an enthusiastic lively character certainly not on screen anyway he might be in the coaching session or with his friends and family, but he comes across as a very thorough, um, meticulous, well-spoken. Um, I, I see that uh, one of our fan social colleagues, uh, Mark Beck, has said he's like uh, an apprentice winner who's been pushed forward. Uh, you know, I can see that. Um, but he's certainly got ambition, and he speaks very well. Um, so my first impressions were, oh, hmm, I'm not like I'm not getting overexcited. But equally, I'm not trying to be critical of the guy either. Um, any job, any job, or any kind of first day on a job is going. You're going to have nerves. But I actually thought is what he had to say he delivered really thoroughly, and he's obviously a, a deep thinker and uh, a confident young man. Um, and he and he's put himself forward to this, and he feel he, uh, he clearly feels he's capable of um, of this next challenge. So that's really um, interesting, I guess. I would love to have seen a little bit more passion, but that's just my personal take. Actually, what he's got to say was really good. Um, so, yeah, first impressions, relatively positive, but, um, you know, still, I can't imagine our press conferences are going to be that entertaining. I'm not sure his team talks might be that entertaining, but, hey, football points, um, for, sorry, points on the table and um, winning performances, you know, the cliche of let the football do the talking and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, decent, decent first impression, but I'm not going overboard either. So well said as ever, John. Uh, let's get into Lee and then your first impressions on Kieran McKenna. Um, as John said, he's, he's a, you're a young coach. He's only 35. Um, he's been basically dropped into the deep ends. Um, probably it's his proper first interview. Uh, I'm sure he's done a few interviews here and now. I've never watched interviews, but um, what's your first impressions of him? Uh, I, I'm I'm quite impressed. Um, I, I think he comes across as what one of these modern coaches. He seems to say the right things, but I think what he's the substance of what he has said is the key to it. I I, I don't really care to be honest if he's if he's a bit droll. Um, that's just his personality. If he wins football matches, I couldn't care less if he's the most boring man in, in Britain. Um, I don't think he's boring either. I, I think he he's he's never been the main man anywhere. Um, this is his first first uh, job as the as the main 
man in the hot seat, I suppose. And he's always been able... I mean, he's done other interviews, of course, but um, I, I don't think... Um, I don't think uh, we can take too much away from his his demeanour being a little bit, a little bit maybe quiet. Um, m- maybe that is just the way he wants to get on with things. At United, he was always behind the scenes, um, and as 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 John said, he didn't know who he was, and that would have taken a lot of people by surprise as well. John wouldn't have been the only one. Um, obviously, I was here last week reacting to him getting the job and um, being a, a United fan from a young age and so on. I, I know who who he is. Um, and and look, I, I think he's exactly everything I expected him to be. I think he, he is a modern coach that um, is going to talk, say all the right things. But at the same time, he's got that air of calmness and that um, demeanour of, of, of being in control, I think. I think he knows what he wants. He knows what he's here to do. And he just wants to get started with it. I think I think uh, all the chat and everything, we can talk all we like. But I think uh, the proof will be in the pudding on the pitch. And I, I, I really think that it is still quite an exciting prospect. Great little Christmas pun there as well, puddings. Oh, puddings. Um, enough of that, though. Enough of that silliness. Uh, John, let's talk about the takeaways then. I've um, asked both of you to give you two takeaways. Um, start off with your first one. And what is it? Yeah, I guess the major theme and my takeaway was the way he talked about work. Um, there's work to do. I'm coming to work. That thoroughness. And I guess I've written down a couple of words here, uh, how we came across links to my first point. But the takeaway of this dry, calm, measured, tactical person who's going to be particular and logical and thorough, almost meticulous in his approach. Um, I guess the, 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 the most famous manager of that ilk would have probably been Wenger, who revolutionised uh, the British game. You know, I think he came with that thoroughness beyond the kind of the typical previous British manager about like that rallying call for like everybody, go, you know, he was much more organized everything was more purposeful and um, done for a reason rather than because it used to be done that way and i think um we kind of came across like that 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 there's work to do and i'm bringing i'm coming to work and i'm going to be the very best person i can be in work and that's that's quite an interesting take so it's not just about you know the personality which we're talking about and i'm sure he's a very decent decent man um people speak well of him don't they people who know him you know Mourinho, um, he talked about uh, Andre villas uh, and you know he's been he's rubbed shoulders with some really good people, and he said he's learned, and I think him and his assistant manager have clearly shown that thoroughness in their willingness to learn and willingness to develop, and that hunger to be the best coach. Now he wants to be the best manager he can be. So, but that the takeaway was very much around the work, the focus on the detail, that kind of um, thorough, meticulous. Um, approach to being a, a football, a modern football coach, come football manager. Definitely, and um, Liam, your first takeaway, then, my friend, as as you said, you you know McKenna a bit more than us because of the connection with United. Um, but what is the one, the first one takeaway? I, I I think I think the key the key aspect is what he was talking about about the the January transfer window. I think we all know that we're going to need to have a few additions because there are areas of that squad that do need strengthening. I think we all realise that the left-hand side hasn't worked um, quite um, for quite a while now and was probably one of the downfalls to Paul Cook uh, in, his, in his system not working, really, in, in the fact that, that left-hand side was was defunct and then obviously the right hand side went down when Burns went. Um, so I think obviously we've all said that we'd like to see um, at least a left left sided either wing back or full back, depending on obviously playing a three or a four. And then obviously potentially maybe some wide wingers. Um, so we have some options there because we have been quite narrow. 
But I think the big thing for me is, is he said, yes, I've given a little list of people I think that could come in and help players that might be good uh, and certain positions. But he wants to work with this group. And I think that's exactly the sort of man that he is. But I think he has had so much experience now as a coach uh, under some really big names in the game. But I think he feels that he can make the players who are already available better than what they have been showing and can improve them as players. And I think as fans, we can all we can all appreciate that the players that we've got should be good enough and they haven't been good enough so far. And I think that we don't need to have another 19 changes. We, we, we don't just need to bin this squad and start all over again. But I think that the fact that he is coming in and he wants to work with those players that we already have, um, I think is is really important because I think he feels that with the players he's 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 worked with, I think he feels he can make a difference, and that that for me is is the key take from it. Um, I think. He wants to bring his excellent standard as a coach to the fore. Whether the rest of it will come together, we we will we will we'll find a regarded coach. So I'm excited to see what he can do with the players that we've already got here. Definitely. And um, John, over to you. Your your final takeaway on Kieran McKenna's um, first press conference and first official day. Yeah, um, I think the other thing for me was just. Um, I'm always you always move on straight away to what what's the next bit, and he I, I got quite excited when he said he was going to be bringing in a coach hopefully in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, I think he said. So if you think um, when when Cook was sacked, we also lost. Um, I don't think it was much of a loss, but Franny Jeffers, uh, Gary Roberts, and um, the kit man Creaney. Um, so this including Cook, that's four vacancies if you like in the structure that Ashton and Co have. Uh, uh, um, freeing up if you like with all the um, Andy Rolls and all the other guys Andy Costin um, all in place you think that um, he's going to have himself in his number two but there's going to be a third coach and he talked about maybe later on in the year maybe in the summer and a fourth coach so it'll be interesting to see who comes in is it going to be a town man is it going to be is it going to be an ex-town person is it going to be one of the Man United set up uh, that always excites me that, you know, we're already talking about who could the next ne left back be or who could the third coach be? Because what, as soon as you got that, you want the next step. So, yeah, um, the fact that clearly, I think this shows where Ashton and O'Leary and um, Game Changer Ownership is that they've got their club set up um, the way they wanted it to be set up and the coach comes in or the manager comes in with his assistant and maybe a couple of other people and then you know, in six months' time, if it hasn't worked, those four people will go, and then the other four people go, and rather than twelve people come and go. Um, I'm hoping I'm wrong in that. I hope it's three or four years that we're flying high in the championship, and suddenly um, comes in for him from above, and we lose him for the wrong reasons rather than because it hasn't worked out. Um, but yeah, um, I think just seeing how it develops, and like Liam was saying, if his major skill is being a coach and bringing players on then he needs to have other people around him to do maybe some of the motivational stuff or some of the different aspects of the job. So it would be interesting to see who he appoints. So, yeah, I guess we could have another video in a few, couple of days when the, when the next um, person's appointed. But, yeah, just to see how that develops and whether, you know, there's going to be room for Kieran Dyer to be involved, health issues pending, or even John McGreal. I don't think McGreal should do it because I think that would leave – he should go into the under-23s now. But I think it'd be good to see Dyer getting involved because he's another good young coach, isn't he? So let's see what happens with that. We shall indeed. And I'm sure the club will announce it whenever. Um, and Liam, uh, final say on this and your takeaways. Um, one thing people watching maybe asking, we haven't really spoke about how he'll set up his team. And I know that is your next takeaway. Um, of course, we won't know much until he plays his first game, which is against Gillingham on Boxing Day, of course, pending uh, any news from the government. But uh but yeah, Liam, your final takeaway. Um, I just <clears throat> just wanted to add quickly what John was saying. I would like to see Kieran Dyer part of it. Um, I think quite a lot of the players 
have recently spoken quite highly about Dyer. Um, so it'd be good to see him elevated into the into the the senior setup. And and I think the other side as well is Martin Pert, who I didn't know <laughs> really anything about. I didn't know he was actually at United. Heard of McKenna, but hadn't heard of um, Pert. But the fact that he has brought someone in who he clearly trusts. And look, I, I, I'm not one of these ones who completely subscribes to the fact that uh, Cook failed because Richardson wasn't here. But you can see why a lot of people did on the stat uh, did think that not having an assistant would make a big difference, and I, I, I think him having someone that he clearly trusts is going to make a big difference to this regime. So that that for me is is um, I'm very happy about. But I mean, in terms of the setup, um, for me. What I want to see, and, th- and this is what we didn't see on the Cook, is Cook was wedded to the four-two-three-one. So was Lambert to to some extent, and they didn't want to change it. They didn't want to change that and try something different when it wasn't working, and we were getting the same drops over and over again. Um, whereas I think with McKenna. And look, I would like to see us play a three at the back and play with wing backs and play two up front. But for me, I want to see McKenna play, and I think this is what we're going to get, is a game-by-game game basis. He is going to look at the opposition and he is going to try and get our team set up to play against what we're, what we're going to come up against. And change things if needs be. And that's what I want to see. I want to see that adaptability. I want to see someone who realises it's fine if he has a philosophy, if he has a formation that he prefers, that's fine. But I want to see change inside that formation or a complete change of formation if things aren't working to show that the manager is trying something. It's trying something different or realises that what is being put forward isn't working and we need to do something different. That The past two managers that we've had, experienced though they might be, were reluctant to change. And unfortunately for Paul Cook, a lot of the reasoning why he ended up getting sacked was because the 4-2-3-1, in theory, could have worked and probably should have worked, but injuries, uh, as I've already said about the left-hand side, injuries cost us a lot, but he was reluctant to change it with the players that he had available. Try something different. If the 4 2 3 one isn't going to work properly, because you haven't got the full-backs working in harmoniously at the moment, try something different, but he never did. He was trying to shoehorn that and continue to shoehorn that and hope, fingers crossed, that it would click and it would just work. And I want to see something different. And I think with McKenna, him saying that he doesn't have, um, he doesn't um, consider himself too bothered about formations. It's more about a style of play. The big thing, though, that I think what he said was off the ball, that he wants town to be aggressive off the ball. And I want to see pressing. I want to see a team hungry to get the ball back, pushing teams back that teams have done to us, where we've been pushed back and we can't get out. And I want to see that. And I think that's been one of the biggest weaknesses Town have had for a number of years. We've just not been good enough off the ball. And I, I want to see that. And And the fact that he was talking about the game at the weekend and the, the 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 kind of I think he used the phrase harmonious kind of marriage between the fans and the players that they were getting the players were getting a buzz off the crowd and I think that's that's the exciting takeaways I think he wants wants to do something on that and try and get players um, to to be more flexible. 
um, and be the team be more flexible going forward. And we we can then hopefully see a team that's going to be very exciting, score lots of goals, and hopefully, hopefully we will uh, we will end up with promotion. But I don't want to put promotion on it. I I, I know he has to say that, but I don't want to I don't want to put too much pressure on at the moment because this is a mess, not of his making. And if we fail to make the playoffs, then um, that's from my from my point of view, nothing to do with him. Wow, well said as always, my friend. And John, I don't know if you were urging the talk there or you're just agreeing with what Liam was said. I'm sure both was the latter. Did you want to add anything else? I, I was going to kind of add in that about the aggression off the ball um, because yeah. that came through and that has to be a real pleasing aspect. So well done for mentioning that, Liam, because I think we all want that work rate and we love it when Morsi puts his foot and we love it when Norwood works it his socks off to get back or does some we need the whole team to do that as a matter of course all of the time so i look forward to that indeed uh well liam john thank you very much for joining me it's a pleasure as always the first impressions the takeaways on kieran mckenna let us know get involved in the comments your thoughts your first impressions and we'll see how it goes with kieran mckenna um thanks again for watching stay tuned for all the content that is coming your way have a good christmas if you don't watch any other content on our channel. Uh, but if you do, make sure you have a good Christmas and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.